This presentation is part of the TI in Focus AP Calculus video series. In this video, I'll discuss the scoring guidelines for the 2018 AP Calculus exam, Free Response Question BC6. My name is Steve Kokoska. I'm a professor at Bloomsburg University in Pennsylvania, and I'm a former AP Calculus chief reader. Here is an outline of the information presented in this video. I'll start by reviewing the free response question, and then the scoring guidelines used at the AP Calculus reading. I'll present a brief general summary for student performance on this question, and then I'll consider more detailed interpretations of the scoring guidelines and how these guidelines were applied in certain situations. I'll consider some common student errors where it's relevant, and where appropriate I'll present some specific responses and the score for each. In this last free response question on the BC Calculus exam, often a series question, we're given the Maclaurin series for the log of 1 plus x. And we're told that on its interval of convergence, the series converges to the log of 1 plus x. And there's another function f here, defined by f of x is equal to x times the log of 1 plus x over 3. In part a, we need to write the first four terms and the general term of the Maclaurin series for f. In part b, we need to determine the interval of convergence of the Maclaurin series for f. And in part c, we need to find an error bound associated with the fourth degree Taylor polynomial for f at x equal 2. The scoring for part a was pretty straightforward. Part a was worth two points one point for writing the first four terms of the Maclaurin series, and one point for writing the general term of the Maclaurin series. Part B was worth five points, and this is a pretty typical rubric for this kind of a question. One point for setting up the ratio associated with the ratio test, one point for computing and sufficiently communicating the limit of the ratio, one point for finding the radius of convergence. And then the student needs to check the endpoints of the interval. One point for considering both endpoints. And one point for the analysis and the final interval of convergence. Note that there is an alternate solution on the scoring standard for earning the first three points. This solution involves the known radius of convergence of the Maclaurin series for the log of 1 plus x. Here's the work involved to consider each endpoint and to determine the final interval of convergence for the function f. And finally, part c was worth two points. One point for using the fifth degree term as the error bound, and one point for the final answer. Here are some general comments about student performance on this question. In part A, some students used the formula for the coefficients in a Maclaurin series. That is, they tried to compute the coefficients by differentiating the function and evaluating. But the algebra was painful here, and it led to student errors. Many students were able to use function composition and multiplication to find this Maclaurin series. However, some students found the Maclaurin series for x over 3 times the log of 1 plus x. In part b, most students applied the ratio test appropriately. And most students recognized that just finding the limit and the interval was not sufficient, that it was necessary to check the endpoints. However, a common error here was to draw a conclusion about an endpoint without any justification or supporting work. In Part C, it appeared that many students simply did not understand this question, or perhaps the notation. Some students used the wrong term in the series, and some students used the fifth term instead of the fifth degree term. In Part A, the first point was for writing the first four terms of the Maclaurin series. And to earn this point, the terms must be exactly correct. Now, the terms don't need to be simplified, but you do have to distribute that x. And the four terms can be in a list. 
Here are some example responses and the score for each. In example one, the first four terms are written correctly as part of a sum, and this earns the first point. In example two, the x is distributed, but remember the terms do not need to be simplified. This also earns the first point. In example three, the x is not distributed. This does not earn the first point yet. The student may go on to distribute and earn the point later. And in example four, the constant 108 is incorrect, so this does not earn the point. The second point in part A was for the general term of the Maclaurin series, and it must be our general term. The general term does not need to be simplified, and if the student includes summation notation, we won't penalize them for starting at n equals zero or n equal one. We just focus on the general term for the purposes of scoring this point. And the general term must be declared in part A to earn this point. In part B, the first point was for setting up the ratio associated with the ratio test. And this is a setup point, and it's earned for the correct ratio only. The limit and or the absolute value symbol are not necessary to earn this point. And if there is no general term given in part A, then this must be our ratio. Here are some common example responses. Each response here earns the first point. The second point in part B was for computing the limit of the ratio. And this point is earned for the correct limit. And we have to see explicit indication of a limit. Either the symbol LIM or an arrow is the minimal notation that indicates a limit. And it's okay in this problem if the absolute value symbol suddenly appears, as in the example below. If the response indicates that the limit is zero over zero, then the point is not earned. The third point in part B was for the radius of convergence. And there was an eligibility criteria here. The limit cannot be zero the absolute value of x, the absolute value of x squared, or infinity. And the limit must be a result from using consecutive terms. The overall philosophy in grading this part is that the student needed a ratio and a non-trivial radius of convergence. Now, if the student met the eligibility requirement, then we read with the presented limit. This point was earned for identifying the radius of convergence, 3. But it was okay to present an interval or use the absolute value. However, the response, the absolute value of x over 3, was not sufficient to earn this radius of convergence point. More work is necessary here to convey the radius of convergence. To earn the fourth point in Part B, the student must consider both endpoints. And there was an eligibility criteria here also. The radius of convergence cannot be zero or infinity, and the interval must be centered at zero. The philosophy behind scoring this point is that the student must actually consider the endpoints, not simply identify them. Now, there may be errors in the response, but the student could still convey that they are considering the endpoints. For example, here the numerator is incorrect, but the point is still earned for considering both endpoints. And it's possible to earn this point with a verbal, or rather sentence-type response. The last point in Part B was for the analysis and the final interval of convergence. And to earn this point, a student must provide correct justification for both endpoints and the correct interval. Now, the correct interval is minus 3 to 3, open on the minus 3 end and closed on the 3 end. And the endpoints must be correct to earn this point. Here are some acceptable justifications for the endpoint x equal 3. And here are some acceptable justifications for the endpoint x equal minus 3. 
The first point in Part C was for using the fifth degree term on the way to producing the error bound, and it must be the fifth degree term. So either one of these responses would earn the point. This response does not earn the point because it's the fifth term or the sixth degree term. The second point in Part C was for the final answer. And both points in Part C could be earned in one step. Here are some example responses and the score for each. The first response earns both points. The next example does not earn the first point yet, and certainly not the second because the answer is incorrect. And the last example earns the first point, but not the second yet. Just one more note about this question. It was possible for a student to earn points in this question even if they made an error in Part A, but their general term was still a Maclaurin series. Now I won't go into scoring this in great detail, but there were three common cases. The 3N case involved the Maclaurin series with a general term that did not include a 3 to the N, but rather a 3 times N. The second case involved students with an incorrect Maclaurin series in Part A, even with a 3 to the N term. And some students had an N factorial in their Maclaurin series. At the AP Calculus reading, an actual briefing for the scoring of a free response question usually takes approximately 75 minutes. And there is also time allotted in the reading rooms for discussion before the actual scoring begins. However, I hope this summary video gives you a good idea of how this question was scored. And just a reminder, there are lots of valuable resources on the TI website. There is material there involving technology and calculus, classroom activities, and lots of calculator tips and tricks for test success.